chance that I could make those people dance and maybe they'd be happy for a while. But February made me. Excuse me, miss. Do you need more followers? Yeah. For only $300, I'll follow you. Nothing stops us from doing right by our customers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Welcome to the Redux Show. This is Rudy Reyes. I don't even know what happened there. I'm at a loss for words. Anyway, welcome to the show. This is Rudy Reyes. I am your host. Look, tune in anywhere you may be listening. You can tune in to the, uh, well, Google, iTunes, whatever works for you. It's good to be back. It's good to be here. And thank you for taking an hour out to listen to me today here on the Rudolph Show, WBLCSports.com. The app is available. Google's iTunes, wherever you may be listening. Thank you for tuning in. This should be a very good show. I was looking forward to have Jason Fanaika on the show. Utah U, now a Steelers defensive end, picked up in free agency. Biggest question is whether or not he'll have time today, which, as my understanding goes, that he will not be available today, unfortunately. Won't be available till Sunday. And, of course, my weekend's basically booked. And I'll be honest with you, I was prepared for an entire hour to have Jason on the show to talk about his trials, tribulations, where he's going. I even pinned the tweet, if you're really interested in that aspect, because why? Well, that's what I like to do. I like to make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on and who's in, who's out, uh, you know, who will be calling in, of course, 216-539-9967. Hopefully, I can get the audio working as well throughout the show. I'll be trying to get that done as well. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Look, Major League Baseball is kicking off really uh, well. Let's just say that opening day for Major League Baseball is a time where many people think this is America's pastime. And you may be right. In some regards, Major League Baseball is certainly just that. However, some people beg to differ. I don't take sides in this issue. Why? Because it's of no consequence. Look, baseball's back, and that's all that matters. Opening day, closing day, middle of the day, end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's baseball, and baseball is upon us right now. There's some live action, Marlins and Nationals. And, of course, the Pirates should be kicking off relatively soon here at uh, 6 past the hour, uh, facing off against the Boston Red Sox. That ought to be interesting. I wish it was at uh, PNC, but it's not. It's in Boston. Yes, I said Boston. So nothing, uh, nothing as of yet. Nothing on fire. No, no blowaways. No, well, basically nothing. There's a lot of teams that have played yesterday. Uh, Yankees got waxed uh, by the Tampa Bay Rays and uh, Cardinals. Uh, basically, had taken it to the Cubs four to three. And then yesterday, of course, uh, Giants try to make a comeback, but the Diamondbacks certainly shut them out 6-5. to five. And when I think of baseball, I think of hot dogs. I think of relish, because some people like to relish the moment. Maybe they like to relish on the hot dogs, and that's the only moment they have. I don't know. Be it for me to complain about it. A couple years ago, I attended... Uh, I try to attend baseball games every year. It hasn't seemed to work out that way. Now, this stuff is pricey, I tell you. Tickets, popcorn, drinks, the whole nine yards. But I'll tell you what, the only teams that need to be drinking right now are those that are trying to make an opening day statement, albeit whether it's the Marlins, Nationals, Pirates, Red Sox, Blue Jays, Orioles, Phillies or Reds, Royals or Twins. It's a slew. It's an onslaught. Indians, Rangers, Padres, and the Dodgers, Tigers and the White Sox, Rockies and the Brewers, or your Braves and Mets. Of course, that game is live as well. There is no score. Both team, both games, Marlins, Nationals, Braves, Mets, bottom third. There is no score. So I'm waiting. 
I'm waiting right now. I'm waiting for baseball to come in, and I could be waiting for some callers as well. Hopefully, I can get the audio fixed. Two one six five three nine 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 six seven. This is Rudy Reyes of the Rudolph Show. WBLZSports.com. And like I said, it's good to be back. I I certainly uh, have have missed everyone, and uh, thank you for being a part of an overall hour. And again, I was prepared for an hour. Let's just say I was prepared for an hour and plus with Jason Fanaika, new defensive end, picked up at a free agency. He clearly really hasn't played a whole lot anywhere. When you look at where he's been, 49ers, Raiders, Redskins, and now the Steelers, it just makes you wonder, is this guy going to find a home? Is he a part of being at home as, and the Steelers picked him up at the right time? Did they do it on the heels of Jarvis Jones heading over to the Arizona Cardinals in free agency? You know, I don't know. They certainly have uh, a lot of components. They picked up in free agency. Cody Sensabaugh being one of them. Uh, Tyson uh, Alualu as well. Uh, free agent coming over from Jacksonville Jaguars. Drafted in 2010 uh, through 2016 with the Jaguars. 258 tackles, eight, 81 assists. Uh, 17 and a half sacks. So certainly something to uh, keep our eye on. Clearly, he's not going to be available. I don't mean Tyson Aluwalu. Jason Fanica won't be available until Sunday. So we're going to talk more about that as time goes on. But I certainly want to move forward talking about baseball. Uh, but again, there's really no action going on in baseball right now. There's there's really, I mean, I don't know. Uh, there really isn't anything going on here that I'm aware of. I haven't seen anything come through Um so I'm just trying to find out here. There are some live um, updates and, and notifications, things of that nature. I just haven't seen anything pop up in a matter of where Major League Baseball actually is. Uh, again, some starting times. Braves and Mets kick off at 1.10. Again, Boston and Pirates 205, all Eastern times. Baltimore 305. So really there's no action going on right now. There are a lot of previews uh, of, of games. Um, you know, that, that's certainly something we could dive into as well. Philadelphia, Cincinnati uh, has a has a preview to be accounted for, and I don't know. Um, like I said earlier, my show was prepared. I was ready to go. <laughs> one, one individual person did quite work out the way, unfortunately, but I previewed the, the National League Central. We're talking about the Reds. We talk about the Reds here for a little bit while we wait for the Pirates to open up. You're probably wondering why I don't have any Pirates gear on because it's opening day. you got to look your best. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a jersey day for me. Besides, they're in the cleaners, so I don't have the, uh, I don't have the ability to wear any. Anyway. Even if I had one, I couldn't wear one. Uh, look, Reds have had more than seven rookies on their opening day roster at least this year. Uh, the pitching against the Phillies... Uh, well, let's just say that he's going to make the Major League debut about 12 years ago. And when you look at Anthony Del Scafani and Homer Bailey, as well as uh, Scott, Scott Feldman, he's a 10-year vet, looking very good for the Reds. But it's real. Uh, the question behind the Reds is, what scouting do they do? And when they do scouting, do they get the guys that they need? Or are they looking for the ones that are going to be the – Answer in the infield, answer in the outside. Lenny, good question. Um, Pirates fifth fifth starter, you mean as part of the rotation? Is that is that my understanding? Are we talking pitching? Are we talking hitting? We're talking pitching, right? Just want to make sure I get that clarification. As far as the Pirates are concerned and where they stand as far as uh, – um, well, I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. These these three veterans have been, uh, I mean, you have Scott Feldman, which is basically decent, not one of the best guys, but certainly finds himself with a very low ERA uh, when, when you're talking about who he is as an individual, certainly brought a lot to this Reds team. But what I like, what I like from Scott Feldman, despite what people may say, he, he's a guy that you want as a party rotation. I don't necessarily agree with putting him at the very front of it, he's not going to be a starter. I mean, okay, look, he's a veteran. He's earned his stripes. He's been there. But let's look at what he's done 
last year. And I know everybody wants to talk about last year, but again, that's your standing point, Lenny. When you look at last year and you look at what he did, um, American League's had two wins, one loss as a starter, uh, is .667, which is fine. I mean, he's, again, he's decent in a win-loss category, uh, but we were talking about the ERA. ERA was better in the year previous, well, the same year with Houston. Somehow he didn't catch on quite right. Uh, when you look at what he had done, uh, 8.40 ERA versus a 2.90 ERA for the Reds coming over from, from Houston during the, the free agency move. Uh, as far as the, 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 the three guys, I don't know. I went over with, uh, with, with Greg Brown of, uh, about the Reds and, and, and where they're at and where they see themselves. Um, man, I don't know. I, I, I just have issues with, with what they have done, with the pitchers that they have acquired, with the guys that they feel will be the, you know, will be the ultimate answer as a part of the rotation. But, you know, starters, I don't know. Do they have any viable starters? Are they any decent starters? Are they going to have starters that uh, are going to contribute to the system? Are they going to be a positive piece of the puzzle moving forward? I don't know. I mean, you can you can project them and say that these guys will stay as a part of the lineup. Uh, but you know what? Their season can live or die by the rookies that they have right now. Let's go into their projected lineup because that's that's what I want to see. I want to see the projected lineup. I want to see where the Reds are going to go, what they're going to take. I think Cody Reed is one of them, but I don't know if they're going to start all these guys. Because, again, rookie pitchers, they're either there in the beginning or they're not. When you look at – let's just – okay, let's talk about Homer Bailey for a minute. Right? Homer Bailey – for the Reds, he has a 6.65 ERA. That's not very good. I like his I like his motion. I like his action. I mean, his career lows at 4.24 ERA. So, is he going to be part of that rotation? I don't know. It's it's about production. If he doesn't pr- produce uh, as a right-handed pitcher. In all fairness, 174 games. He's got you know no saves. He's not a save. He's not, he's not a closer. Um, he's won two. He's lost three. I, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. They can live or die with this guy. It depends on where his production. If he is, he's going to uh, stand up and be uh, and be accounted for as a guy who who you really need to have as far as Cody Reed is concerned. And where he's at last year, again, not very good ERAs. Cody Reed, Homer Bailey, the guy you're really going to have to head, hang your hat on is going to be Scott 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 Feldman. Scott Feldman's much better. Oh, uh, Bailey's hurt since when? I didn't get the memo on that one. Davis. Uh, Look, the Reds are going to do what they have done years ago, is put the sacrifice guys in position. Oh, so Homer Bailey is now injured on DL. Oh, that's nice. So then now they're going to rely on on Davis, Feldman, and maybe Di Scafani? I think I like Di Scafani. Better than than Reed as a part of that lineup. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I look at Di Scalfani, and I think to myself, is he going to be part? <laughs> Trying to get his name right. Di Scalfini. No, I can't find him. I can't find it, but look, bottom line is the Reds haven't done too much. They haven't done as much as they, as they need to in drafting and scouting, whether they bring up guys correctly from AAA uh, or not. I'll be honest with you. I, I was talking with, with Greg Brown about this last week, and you have a 1-2-3 in the NL Central. Thank you, Lenny, for your commentary. <laughs> no more embarrassing than being prepared for somebody who doesn't call in. So, anyway, 
that's baseball. I'm looking for more. I'm looking for updates. Nothing really on the wire as of yet. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to switch over to another subject of mine, maybe a projected starter, but we're not talking baseball. We're going to switch over to football. Talking the NFL, Martinez Bryant. No, that's not how you spell his name either. It's not D-I-C-L-A. <laughs> If my audio is working, you're more than welcome to call in 216-539-9967. I don't know that it's working. And if it hangs up, I just let you know in advance. It didn't quite work out that way. Well, let's switch over here. I want to talk about this whole Martavis Bryant, Roger Goodell situation. And when I look at this from the outside, I think that, that Roger Goodell has had more than enough time. More than enough time to not only give an answer to Martavis Bryant as to whether or not he's going to be starting in the 2017 season with the Steelers. But basically, we're just waiting on the power that be. Not power. It's not a group of individuals that makes decisions as to whether or not people play or don't play in the NFL. But this is one person, Roger Goodell, that's certainly holding things up right now for Martavis Bryant. He was good when the Steelers had him and when they didn't. I think they missed that big, deep threat, six foot five guy down the sideline. You could put Antonio Brown on the opposite side, and that's great. But when you don't have a guy who's a huge target, very athletic, very physical, he gets hit and comes right back up, ready to you know, ready to run. Um, I don't know that that holding on to this type of decision by Roger Goodell is really working for not only the Steelers as, as they sit and wait. And they hurry up and wait for the decision to be made. But Martinez Bryant, too, is waiting. He's waiting very patiently, I might add. I think Martinez Bryant's been one of the lesser two evils when you're talking about guys that are trying to get back into the NFL that have committed to hurting themselves in the past. Does Johnny Manziel get a chance and will find a job, an opportunity over, let's just say, Kaepernick? Oh, ooh, sore spot for some, not so for others. And unfortunately, I think that may be accurate. I think one of the reasons that Colin Kaepernick isn't getting into the NFL, and no, it has nothing to do with a vegan diet. It has nothing to do with anything other than do teams want to tackle the baggage that he comes with. Yes, he's been trying to make amends for the lack of Americanization when it comes to do I stand, do I sit, do I kneel, do I do a handstand? You know, what do I do to get back into good races in the NFL? And the way that I look at it for Colin Kaepernick is it's a little late. Will teams give him an opportunity? He's not going to want backup money. But unfortunately, he could very well be a backup. He backed up in San Francisco, but that was part of his contract. He, he basically said, you know what? You can have the rest of my money. I don't want to play here anymore. For non-starting position, he wanted to be a starter, but didn't earn his starter spot. San Francisco 49ers were very bad last year. They were bad in a passing situation. Colin Kaepernick's a runner. Yeah, it's like, okay, fine. He had a one Super Bowl appearance, but that doesn't mean anything. You know how many players in the NFL, in NFL's past, had playoff experience who had entered the Super Bowl but never won? I can give you at least 10 or 15 right off the bat that didn't win. Why they didn't win? Because it's a team effort. Some guys didn't do it, and some guys didn't. They, they handled it. They took care of it. From a coaching standpoint, from a player standpoint, from a mentality standpoint, did they? Did they really do and give all of who they are in order to contribute to a win? I don't think so. Otherwise, they would have won. 90 Steelers is no exception to that rule. The years of Miami Dolphins were so bad, they couldn't even get in the race. There weren't even conversations running the Dolphins. And they go on this, this win streak. They end up winning the Super Bowl. Well, you kind of suspected that. You seen the writing on the wall. Last year was a complete Paul Robinson. That the NFL has changed. Players have changed. Mentality has changed. Meaning that when you look at a guy... When you look at a team, you look at a guy on a team, you think to yourself, is he designated to be on this team? Is he a, the right fit for this team? Will this team even get into position? Look, Tom Brady was 
was shut out for four games. He didn't bother appealing it. Four games, four whole games. You build the dichotomy, you build a relationship, you build a rapport with all your fellow players. He came in, filled in for Garoppolo. He filled in for, uh, I'm trying to remember his last name. I want to see Barrett. And came in and basically just took every team apart, sliced them. Gronkowski was injured near the middle of the season. Didn't matter. They had Martellus Bennett. They had Julian Edelman. They had all these all these guys who were ready to fill in at a moment's notice. Martellus Bennett no longer with the Patriots, but did everything he needed to do as a utility player without having Gronk. They changed who they're throwing the ball to, but they didn't change the plan. The plan was the same. The goal was the same. Let's see if I can get a caller in here. If my audio is working, you're more than welcome to talk on the Rude Dog Show. Hey, hey, Rude Dog, it's, it's uh, Luke, New Jersey. Hey, how's it going? All right. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm psyched up for guys' uh, big college basketball championship matchup. Oh, you want to go there. Oh, boy. You know, I was talking Uh-oh. about this earlier. No, I was talking about this earlier saying that I wanted to see a Carolina uh, type of situation where it's a battle of the South and North Carolina teams. It didn't work that way, unfortunately. Uh, but you, you get to see. So. <laughs> no, it, it, it was nice, though. It was nice to think that you'd be able to witness the battle of the Carolinas, everybody with their Gamecock red and their uh, North Carolina blue. It didn't quite work out that way. And now. Uh, we have a Gonzaga, North Carolina team. I didn't see Gonzaga even remotely at this point. What are your thoughts about Gonzaga? Do you think they'll have enough uh, zigzag uh, to take out North Carolina? Yeah, I do. I think I think their time is due. I mean, they've been they've been so close for so long, and now I think they finally get the piece of the puzzle, and I think that they're going to pull it out. But I will tell you, it will be a very close knit tight game. Well, it's always going to be a close game. But I think it's going, to be a, it's going to be a fairly tight game. I think it'll be a tight game as well. I really like, look, all season long, I've watched North Carolina, okay, all season. Because they're, they're, they were a hot team. They've won uh, the most. They've had the most appearances. And one of those teams where if it's coached by Roy Williams, you better believe they're going to be in a conversation of, where do we stand now, and how do we get to the top? And when I look at brackets, when I, when I look at all of these things, it didn't even make any sense. And the fact that that Duke was taken out uh, by this this Carolina Gamecock team that just basically surprised everyone, surprised absolutely everybody, including me. I didn't think that Carolina, uh, that South Carolina, had it in them, and uh, very unfortunate to see them go out. But what they did had taken down Duke. At that point, everybody's bracket was busted. Everybody thought that this this Coach Krzyzewski's yeah. team would take these guys into uh, the the Holy Land. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, I think they just made too many mistakes down the stretch, and this is where we're at right now. this year anyway. What's that? I'm sorry? I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't thinking Duke was going to you know, pull out this year. They, were, they didn't look as, you know, as confident they look kind of shaky this year well they I, I, with all of what uh, coach keith been going through well here's the thing they had lost games they didn't need to and the games that they lost that they didn't need to were the ones that were a part of the acc i mean they were a powerhouse for a very long time they there are no north carolina there are no tar heels but the fact that they're right in the street from one another certainly begs the question are these teams too much alike? Would that be a valid argument? I think they are too much alike. They're very similar. They're very similar. How are they similar? How are they different? Maybe that's a problem. Do you think that 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 the NCAA provides parity in the league, or do you think that maybe there isn't enough parity in the NCAA basketball system that? 
basically creates better better play between better teams. Well, I heard there's been a lot of parity in the NBA um, in recent years, and I think that's what um, you know uh, ruins uh, the game. Well, I think I think that, that that you have to have a certain level of parity in accordance with all of these teams. And I don't know what it's like in basketball as far as the NCAA drafting, uh, you know, getting players from high school and bringing them up in their system and they're committed to giving them, you know, golden opportunities to be part of part of their system, part of their basketball system. Well, the biggest question is, in football, in the NCAA, there's, there's not as much parity. But the scouting is done differently. You look at you look at stats, you look at numbers, you look at character, you look at personality, you look at uh, talent, you look at uh, what other team, uh, what what other players on their team thinks about them, what do their coaches think about them. We're not talking about where a guy who let's just say that has committed you know dumb things off the hardwood or dumb things off of the field. If an, if an NCAA coach, basketball or football, for that matter, finds a guy that works in the system, do you think there's enough parity to help uh, help the student athlete understand that this is their last and final chance? And as in the case of Martavis Bryant, he he was a complete example of. Did he do this stuff in college too? He's been in trouble with marijuana for you know. A long time now, off and on, but was this part of the scouting report? Did they did, did the scouts for the Steelers go in and talk to Clemson and say, "Yeah, you know, he's got this issue. He has that issue." Was the question even asked, or did they even care? What are your thoughts on that? I don't think they, I don't think they even cared, and they should have they should have investigated the matter because you know there's no room for that in, in the um, in the in the athletics pro or college. You know they have these. Uh, drug problems. There's, there's no need to. They should have been, you know, more aware of it. Well, the problem is, is that they need to be aware of it. That doesn't mean there's anything that's going to be done about it. You can say, "Look, I seen a guy with a gun. Did, did you call the cops? What did you do? Let the guy walk by? Was it a sunny afternoon? Was the sun in your face? You know, did, did you have the conversation? Did you, did you tell somebody this was going to happen? No. That, and that is the whole problem. But you should have. I think that's that's. I, I think that's that, that's the well, entire that's problem. It's always a possibility, no matter what. Yeah, it's the school's responsibility. Actually, it's not. You know whose responsibility it is? The coach. But if you want to really go there, it's the player's responsibility to know in advance that this is not something I should do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation about why you're being kicked out of the NCAA football, basketball, or the NFL because of what you had done that went either unspoken, they turn the other cheek and say, you know what, it doesn't matter. You're going on the next level anyway. It's not my problem. I'll let it be their problem. Do you think that NFL scouts should do a much better job? Do you think NCAA scouts should do a much better job, whether it's football or basketball? I think they should both do their job. You know, you should, uh, you know, research more on who you, who you, um, who you're scouting. Because who knows what they're working, you know, off the field. Well, well, that's, that's the entire problem, is that they don't. I know. They don't ask the questions. How are you going to know if the guy that you're going after is going to be a positive, characteristic person of high morals, in your locker room, do you think that person is going to contribute to what you need to have done on the field as well? Probably not. No. NFL teams turn a blind eye because it's based on production. Guys like, oh, I don't know. Um, gosh, there's a whole plethora of guys. We'll use we'll yeah. use we'll use Beckham as a very good example on the sidelines. Yes. Antics. Right? You're from Jersey. You know. You see it all the time. You hear about it on yeah. the news for the football season. Beckham decides to pull a field goal netting with bars supporting it for the kicker, put his hand on it, and it knocks him in the face. I mean, 
Seriously, don't you know this is something you shouldn't be doing? Is there is, is he missing something? Is there is there something that wasn't asked of him to do or not to do? How many conversations did Coughlin have to have? How many conversations did Eli Manning have to have? You got to know when to draw the line here, and I don't think the line was drawn with Beckham's antics. And some people never learn. Yep, and that's exactly what we're talking about here on the show is learning from your mistakes. Will, will Martavis Bryant see an, an absolute in relation to Roger Goodell saying, you know what, we're going to get you back into the NFL because you've paid your penance? No, he's not. Martavis yeah. Bryant will get in, but Roger Goodell is slouching his feet. He's saying, you know what, we're going to make him wait. We're going to make him suffer as long as humanly possible. So that way... He can, he can know what it's like. He can, he can feel the stress. I don't think that's right at all. If he has paid his dues, like any other player, has Johnny Manziel paid his dues as well? Do you think Johnny Manziel is ready to get back into the NFL? Go ahead. Yeah, but he's still getting trouble anyway. I mean, Manziel, you know, we all thought he was, you know, a great player, a great guy when he was in college, and then he turns he turns into this jackass, you know, with all of a sudden, with the uh, injuring his girlfriend in an accident or with the car and whatnot and substance abuse. I mean, you know, we all thought it was the all American boy. He's all American jerk. I wouldn't want him. Unfortunately, the scouting wasn't done efficiently on him either. Look, no. in today's NFL and I, and I tell these to every single guy that I have on my show, every player I have on my show, whether it's NBA, whether it's NFL, whether it's MLB, it doesn't matter. Character matters. If your league is not exhibiting high characteristics, then you're falling, you're falling apart. Why do people not see that around you? Johnny Manziel was a... Very good quarterback at Texas A&M, but did not transpose his attitude, his mentality, his any type of professionalism. You learn how to be a professional when you're in college, do you not? Exactly. Okay, so if you don't, if those things do not translate into the NFL, you have nothing. You have nothing. I've said it before here on the show. I don't know how many times, and he's a very good example. Johnny Menzel, of what not to do, of who not to be like. Why? Because of what he continues to do. He was in Houston at the Super Bowl, and he was getting people to pay him for photos to be next to him. I think it was like $150 or something like that. You know what he did with that money? He partied with it. Of course. I've seen the video. Some some tigers can't change their stripes. Actually, wait, that's not leopard. Leopard. Leopard has dots. The zebra has stripes, but you can't change them. They can't even change them. They're born that way. Some people are just that way. If it if the, if it's a duck and it eats like a duck and it walks like a duck, it's a duck. It's not a dolphin. Quack quack. <laughs> quack, quack, said the duck. <laughs> Look, I got to take a quick break. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rudog Show. Caller, are you going to hang on? I will, if you, I will if you let me. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely. Give me one second. I got to run a commercial. I'll be right back. It's Rudy Reyes on the Rudog Show at WBLZSports.com. And a very interesting topic we have today, professionalism, character, in sports in general i guess that should be a conversation i don't think a lot of uh, sports channels or stations have that and yes my fault i was prepared in advance for jason Fanaika, but to no avail i'll get him on sunday anyway this is rudy Reyes of the rude dog show at wblcsports.com look down with the app can't wait for it i'll be right back This is the sheet. It gets me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw. Scott hates it. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 
4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I gotta run. And only Alabama that's the They're so good, man. They would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. Good to him. Kudos on clapping like a golfer. Very good, Johnny. I'm proud of you. Wow. You guys agree on something again? I'm very impressed. Have you ever had a bad week? You know, just you walk outside, step in a photo, like driving, you walk outside, and have a photo right inside the are you, you stand on the curb and somebody driving by and splash the water above you? Or just raining on you? Not anyone else? I, I will tell you before you go any further, I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports and you'll get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. Hey everybody, this is Robin Vandenberg from Bump and Run and Sports and Shiz, and you're listening to WBLZ Sports, where we've got balls. Can we just get a made-up play call from you with Ben Roethlisberger going to Antonio Brown for a touchdown and taking it in for a score? Hi, Ben, no huddle. Looks left, looks right, communicates, steps back into the shotgun. The edge look to his drive, here's the snap, he's back, he looks outside over the middle, there right goes Antonio Brown, he's lost, and he is going, going, gone! Kevin Green to Steel Nation Live. Kevin, great to have you on our show. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Good to be on the show. Join Sandy Tisdale and James Owen and co-host Jeff Reed as we talk to some of the biggest names in Still a Nation Live Sports out there. Check us out every Tuesday night, 6 to 7 p.m. only on WBLZ Sports, the only sports you're out there that has balls. WBLZ Sports, we got balls. There's no spots. Where's your balls? Welcome back to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes, WBLCSports.com. That was an interesting song. I, I didn't expect that one. I was looking for maybe, uh, I don't know, something else. Anyway, welcome back. Look, did you not download the app yet? It's free. You can find it on the RudolphShow.com. You can choose whether you like fruit or you like to Google things. It Those links are available. Anyway, on the RudolphShow.com, your host, Rudy Reyes. We're talking about character in sports, and I'd like to pick on the NFL for a minute. I don't mean necessarily pick on the NFL, but I'd like to talk about how you know, scouts who seemingly are not worried about the guys that they look after, the guys that they really do investigative research on, trying to find out what they're about, who they are, how they continue to maybe find these guys who slip to the cracks. Unfortunately, at that point, it's already too late, and this is where they're at right now. At one point, NFL scouts were worried about the next man up. They were worried about how... Uh, if they had criminal records, no, not really. Were they worried about bad attitudes? No, not really. They were more worried about the fact that can can teams get over players with character flaws, character issues, character type conversations. And unfortunately, character issues seems to be one of those most uncommonly discussed topics that prevent players at all different levels whether you're talking about junior college, college, pro, semi-pro, it doesn't matter. Character issues will prevent you from getting to where you want to go. Now, I'll be honest with you, out of my years of doing this interview, as many players as I have, there's only one guy that I can think of who had character flaws and he was a habitual liar. I know, I know, you probably think he's scratched yourself. Can that happen? Is that plausible? Yeah. Would you 
Dude, did I do enough research on this guy? Yeah, I did. I did my due diligence. The fact of the matter is, is that he had been in trouble with the law that was not disclosed. He has had done uh, several things to discredit himself that wasn't disclosed. So I was going on what I've usually gone on, and that's a player's word. But sometimes that's not what it takes. A player's word isn't always the end all. Talk to the coaches. Talk to maybe family members. Of course, they don't usually want to throw their family under the bus, but they could catch them on a bad day. I don't know. But character issues in all levels of sports are, are those things that will prevent you from going any further. And you ask yourself, does character really matter? Does character matter to you? Yes. It should. It should matter to anybody who's getting paid billions of dollars to be in a professional sport for which they exhibited high athletic skills. And unfortunately, that's not the case. If you don't have character, what do you got? You don't have anything. You got nothing. You're wishing on a hope and a prayer that what you're able to do once they get into your system, that you can change who they are. And you can't. You cannot. There is no exponential component. There's no fairy dust. There's no, unless they get rehab and it's consistent and it's helped to work on someone's character, who they are on the inside, do they have personal problems disabling them from developing into the NFL? To NBA, to Major League Baseball. More common than not, you'll hear about character issues in the NFL. More often than you will NBA, more often than you will Major League Baseball. That is a fact. It's just a fact. I wonder what it is, though. Why mostly with solve with the NFL? I mean, because, you know, they have their problems with Major League Baseball and hockey and basketball. So why is it with mostly associated with the NFL? I think there's more media awareness when it comes to guys getting out of the NFL. The draft is huge. Do you see them having this gigantic, massive lottery media coverage in the NBA? No. No. Not no, even on NBA I TV. Too much too. I think there's too much around them. And I think because they're exposed to too much, that adds to their character issue. Case in point, Cam Newton. Drafted in 2011 by the Panthers. Now, I'm, I'm not going to throw this guy under the bus because... In all fairness, in all fairness, he's made some mistakes. But are these called character issues? Do we do we have a fine line? Do we have a fine line between character issues and making mistakes? Or do character issues are all inclusive to making habitual mistakes over and over and over? Case in point, 2008, he was arrested for stealing someone's laptop. On campus, he has a gigantic ego for which his athleticism at times in given situations has certainly shown through. The problem is, is that there is no exception for being a professional athlete with a chip on your shoulder and being a sore loser because that's who Cam Newton is. He's a sore loser. Every time something goes wrong in the game, oh boy, does he really go at it. I think that's just who he is. Yeah. He was voted MVP? NFL MVP. Is there not better criteria for an NFL MVP than a guy who's a sore loser, who's a poor sport? Look, those things are learned early on when you're a kid. Yeah. When you're young. Doesn't Didn't his mommy and daddy tell him that he needs to be nice? That to take losing like he does winning, to help other players, he could have been, or he could have yeah. just signed him on and said, yeah, 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 and then go on to play and do whatever he's going to do. He did it for a long time. He was complaining yeah, last year to Roger Goodell about being sacked and being targeted. I don't think he was sacked or targeted to a point where 
you would think, well, wait a minute here. There are other large quarterbacks in the NFL, and it happens to them as well. What quarterback does not get sacked, Demi? One quarterback that's been his entire year in the NFL did not get sacked. There isn't one. Not at all. There isn't one. There never will be. This is offense versus defense. If you're a defensive guy and you're doing your job, guess what you're going to do? Go to the backfield and kid the guy. Yeah, beat the crap out of him. If you have to. Well, I, yeah. I'm, the Rude Dog Show doesn't condone violence, but what... What I am seeing well, is, is that if, 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 back in the like a, that could have applied back, back in the day. That could have applied to guys like Jack Lambert. It could have applied to Mean Joe Green. It could have applied to oh, yeah. you know tons of players in the NFL. Um, Lawrence Taylor, another good example. That would have applied to them. Unfortunately, in today's NFL, there are so many rules and regulations. You can't hit players who are outside of the pocket. There's no elbows. It's almost at a point where if you think to yourself, if you were just watching the NFL for the very first time, you're used to watching rugby, you're thinking to yourself, why does this guy hit him in the head? Because in rugby, they don't. It's a defense mechanism. But out of hell, and I had, I had a gentleman on the show last week, we were talking about this very same thing. If you don't have a helmet on your head, does it give somebody the ability to target you? No, a defense mechanism is this. when you fall down, you're going to put your hand on the floor before your head hits it. That's a natural reaction. But Cam Newton is a guy where his natural reaction is to re- is overreact instead of just reacting. Ben Roethlisberger stands over six something. He gets hit all the time. He's had broken he's had broken uh, broken foot. He's had sprained ankles. He's had a busted nose. This guy has been battered and beaten in every single sense of the word at the quarterback position. Cap Newton needs to take it like a man or get out of the league. End of story. Because, again, it's about character and not having character issues that will prevent you from being a positive individual in your locker room, to your coaches, to uh, in any other type of situation where... It needs to be counted on. And I think character does. I don't think it's spoken to as of yet. Another case in point. Former Boise State Lions pick 2011, Titus Young, who constantly has shown his immaturity, especially during practice. He was arrested twice in the same day for drunk driving. Again, are these just mistakes or is this habitual character flaws. Is, is there a fine line? Caller, what are your thoughts on that? Is there a fine line? Is there a way to correct the mistakes or are these two aforementioned guys currently playing in the NFL have character issues that they'll continue to exhibit as years go on? I think as the time goes on, they're just going to get worse. Some people just, they never learn. I mean, they get in trouble. They get they get to spare for a few games, even get in jail for a couple of days, but you know what? It doesn't change them. They may never change. They may never no, change. A zebra can't change their stripes, and these guys won't change their stripes. They're, they're like zebras in disguise. Yep, that's where they're at right now. Case in point, Titus Young picked up by the Rams. By the Rams. And they cut him after 10 days. I mean, how many problems can you get into in Los Angeles? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Unless you keep your head on straight, unless you don't have the character flaws that will pre- prevent you from being a positive individual in the NFL. And I know everybody wants to talk about Tyron Matthew and how great of a player he is and all the good stuff. That may be true. And I'm not going to say that he's a bad player, but again, character issues seemingly follow guys like this. He was named a Heisman Trophy finalist, kicked off an LSU team in 2012. The biggest question is, is that did he transform and understand and recognize that his LSU, his college days are behind him and become a a player that the Cardinals need or the NFL needs? In other words, changing your image from a collegiate standpoint to where you're at right now has everything to do with making right decisions, making the better decisions. Matter of fact, Tyron Matthew has had no failed drug test. 
and he's been nothing but a pleasant surprise for the Cardinals. How do you not want a guy like that? It's almost like a success story within a success story, but it's not within the NFL success story. It's from an LSU success story, right? And then last but not least, we have Kyle Long. Of course, you know who the name Long could hold some weight, Howie Long, Raider. Right. His son, character is 2009, while playing at Florida State Baseball, he quit playing after he had a a DWI charge. He agreed to play for Oregon in 2011. How do you agree to play? If they're asking you, say, well, would you like to come on or not, despite your character issues? Was there some type of agreement there? Was that something that, that Kyle himself knew had to be done, the change that he needed to make in order to agree to play for Oregon? I don't know how that works out. But it didn't affect his yeah, NFL career either. He went on to make the Pro Bowl yeah. with Chicago. Not once, but twice. Oh boy. It's amazing how these guys, some of them, some, some, not all, some, find themselves in a situation where they turn and able to turn their lives around from being in a collegiate sport to now doing it and getting it done right in the NFL. There was a report earlier, probably the last thing that I can that I can talk about clearly or to have enough time to talk about. Famous Dallas Cowboy. Everybody should know who this is. Rick Hardy? Rick Hardy? No, that, that's another one. I'm talking past. Okay. Past. Joseph Randall. Arrested. Ooh, that's only good. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Not only that, but Michael Irvin. Arrested on a misdemeanor drug charge. Yeah. He didn't exhibit these things playing in college, but yet he exhibited on a post NFL. So could you say and be safe to suggest that he's had character issues but were in cognito and just now being seen in the NFL? He's arrested in, in Plano with two ounces of marijuana. Of course, he was released. He's Michael Irvin. There were officers uh, who were part of a, a task force that went to the apartment to arrest a woman for heroin trafficking as a part of a regional suite. But again, when you talk about Michael, we're talking about sports, we talk about character in sports. I think that those two, and I, I harp on this all the time. And I'm asking these guys, these student athletes have already put in the work. Why would you go to school to get a degree to leave that school with character problems? Why not create a resolution while you're there? If you know that there's a problem, if your coach has pulled you in the office five, six, seven times, how many times is it going to take for you to recognize that there's a problem? Are parents getting involved in this? Or coaches say, well, as long as you score four or five touchdowns in the next three games, we'll just call it even. I mean, seriously. It's reality. It could happen. I don't know personally that it has, but could it? No doubt. There's no doubt about it. It could very well happen. And it's sad to suggest that these guys have taken it upon themselves. I'm talking about these coaches to hush, hush these student athlete situations, these student athlete conversations. And it's not being discussed. It's not being spoken about. It's not being put on a national stage. Because it hasn't been uncovered yet. I'm not suggesting that it has happened, but it could have. We're not in those conversations. So many teams in the NCAA, and of course the NCAA, that, that, that's a whole other, well, that's actually like a two-hour conversation. And clearly we don't have time for that. Yeah. I don't have any time for that, at least not, not today. Right. Of course. However, with that being said, a lot of times, more often than not, in the NFL, you're going to find guys who continue to have character situations, character problems, and post-NFL players, guys that are in the Hall of Fame, are certainly no 
there's almost like a no surprise clause to this. I mean, there's there, there's a laundry list of players, even in the um, with the Steelers, Joey Porter being arrested and or what they want to say detained because of his outbursts and his behavior. I mean, I could go down a laundry list. I'm not picking on, uh, on the Cowboys necessarily, but they have a laundry list. A lot of players do. A lot of teams do. Some some teams play it indoors. They don't want to bother with it. I'm not throwing people under the bus here. I'm merely stating what it is. Joseph Randall busted for drugs, February 2015. Again, actually earlier, 2014. Theft. Jay Ratliff, DUI. Josh Brett, DUI. Des Bryant, domestic violence. Unknown uh, offense against Ogletree. Brian McCann, 2011, alcohol. Dion Anderson, guns, weapons. Anthony Spencer, 2009, alcohol disorderly conduct. DY Marcus Coleman, in 2006. Look, this is a laundry list. Terry Glenn, disorderly conduct, alcohol, 2005. So as you can see, and again, I'm not picking on the Cowboys necessarily, but I'm seeing that as an example, you either are the example or you're the rule. And right now, a lot of the players, including guys like Randy Moss, who people want to say one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, drafted in 98 by the Vikings. He got arrested in 95 for getting a racially charged dispute at his high school. He lost a scholarship offer from Notre Dame. Later, he was dismissed from Florida State. I mean, where does this, where does this end? First, you have to find out where it starts. If you find out where it starts, yeah. then you're going to help find an end to it and a lot faster of an end than most people would like to admit. Caller, thanks a lot for uh, for calling in. We'll talk tomorrow. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's very nice interacting with Jay from New Jersey. He seems to call me on my show all the time. And, uh, I appreciate his, his call in. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. Lenny, sorry you didn't make it. I was looking for you to call in, but didn't quite... Uh, Turn out that way. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. This is Rudy Ress of the Rude Dog Show at WBLZSports.com. I will see you tomorrow.